talked yesterday on the Feast of St. Luke, the evangelist, uh, the evangelist of mercy. We talked about how truth and charity and mercy and justice all have to work together in the Christian life because all those attributes are in God himself and so there's no contradiction between them. For those of us who are still maturing in the faith or for those who even reject certain teachings of the faith, those attributes can be seen to be in conflict and at times they can be distorted. We heard Jesus say in today's gospel to the apostles, he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 19. Certainly, Saints John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and their companion martyrs took our Lord, Lord's words to heart, and in their preaching of the gospel to the Native Americans in the 17th century, they gave their lives for the truth of the gospel, and out of true charity towards the Native Americans, they gave their lives and they gave themselves because they wanted to bring those men and those women to Christ. And so it's unfortunate to read how a school like Brebeuf, a Jesuit prep in Indianapolis, a school named after such a great missionary, has betrayed essentially the mission of the church and the mission of its namesake of St. John de Brebeuf and betrayed also the commission of our Lord himself, the commission to teach all the nations to observe all that he's commanded us, as Jesus said in today's gospel. A gospel reading which is the proper for the memorial of the North American martyrs, as they're called here in the States. We know that to observe all that Jesus commanded us to observe, we have to adhere to the church's teachings on faith and morals. Jesus says in the gospel of Luke, which is the gospel of mercy, as we noted Yesterday, he says, he who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me, Luke 10, verse 16. So if we refuse to adhere to the church's teachings, we refuse to listen to Jesus. We actually reject him by doing that. And we know life is a series of choices and that there are consequences to the choices that we make. Brave of Jesuit Prep has de facto rejected the church's teachings on marriage and sexuality, and so the consequence was that our Archbishop, Charles Thompson, had revoked their status as a Catholic school. That's actually the least he could have done, and it was actually an act of mercy that he only did that. Um, but deaf to the ears of the Deaf to the teachings of Christ and to the voice of the Archbishop, the school has appealed to the Vatican and has received a temporary suspension on the sanctions imposed upon them. So now it's for the Congregation for the Catholic Education in Rome. They're looking over the matter and presumably in the near future, they'll issue a final judgment regarding the situation. In a previous homily that we gave entitled Herod Occam and Same-Sex Marriage, we mentioned some of the philosophical and theological errors embraced by this Jesuit school, errors which are tacitly present in their choice to retain a teacher who's contracted a civil same-sex marriage. The marriage itself is not a marriage in the eyes of God or in the eyes of the church. It's a union which is offensive to God and to human nature itself. So there's no reason to, again, mention what we've already said before, but we should highlight that this is another example of doing the opposite of what the Apostle St. Paul tells us to do. When he says in Romans 12, 2, he says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. And the renewing of our minds, of which the Apostle speaks, is exactly what Jesus meant when he preached repentance. When he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, for example, in Matthew 4, verse 17, that word repent in the Greek is metanoia. It literally means change your mind, change your way of thinking, change the destructive path in which you're walking. Affirming same-sex marriage is actually being conformed to the mentality of the world rather than being conformed to Christ and Affirming a same-sex couple engaging in such a union really does show a lack of repentance, and it's also a sign that 
The couple in question is living according to the flesh, not according to the spirit, as St. Paul admonishes, admonishes us to live in Romans chapter 8. No matter how you address, uh, you dress this intrinsic evil, it still remains an intrinsic evil, and it's anything but merciful to actually affirm someone who's living a lie and who's hurting themselves spiritually at the same time. Can there be psychological and other factors which diminish the moral culpability of someone in such a union? Yes, of course, there can be, uh, but that's not really the issue that we're dealing with here. The issue is more with the people who run the school itself, the, issue, the people who have a false idea of what compassion and accompaniment are. And what's worse is that Brave off Jesuit prep, uh, basically they're forming the children there to embrace these and probably other cultural lies as well. The words of our Lord come to mind when he says, it would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble, said Jesus in the Gospel of Mercy, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, verse 2. And just before that, in the verse preceding, Luke 17, verse 1, he said, Causes to sin or causes to temptation are sure to arise, but woe to him by whom they come or through whom they come. That word woe, what does that mean? It means watch out. It means you're in trouble, basically. Uh, and I promise you that Jesus himself does not deliver empty threats either, so we should take him seriously when he says that. So yes, we know God's mercy is infinite, it, but God's mercy only can be found where repentance is present. You know, without repentance, unfortunately, there's no mercy. Without truth, there's no mercy either. And it's actually an act of charity to point that out to those who are living in error. Uh, we can certainly have compassion, at least speaking for myself, uh, compassion toward the women who are in this same-sex union. union that's, that's at the heart of this scandal because obviously there's something broken within them, um, telling them, though, that everything that's fine, everything's fine with them, and telling them that their civil marriage is actually blessed by God is, is actually cruel, and it's actually uncaring. Why? Because it's simply not true. But I do confess that uh, compassion tends to run thin uh, for the leaders of the high school who have a greater responsibility before the Lord. And yes, Jesus, we know, was hardest on the religious leaders, on those who led people astray more so than he was towards sinners, but nonetheless, each and every one of us are called to repentance. So today, let's ask St. John de Brebeuf and Our Lady, the Queen of Martyrs, let's ask them to help us get back on track spiritually by rededicating ourselves to the teachings of her son. And let's pray for those who are involved in any way in this local scandal which has turned into a national scandal which has essentially turned into a global scandal if it reaches the vatican it's a global scandal mercy and justice truth and charity all do meet they all do come together where well on the cross of jesus they come together on the cross they come together also under the cross with our lady the sorrowful mother so let's not reject the cross of christ let's learn to embrace it, and it will bring us to paradise with them. Praise be Jesus and Mary.